2009 was my 23rd year as the president of the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation, which is the state's largest foundation. And in that year, I received a gift um, and an honor that was so far beyond anything I'd ever expected and uh, caught me totally by surprise. Uh, in the spring of 2009, I got a letter from the White House inviting me to join President Obama to go to Moscow to meet with uh, Mr. Putin for the first summit meeting with the new president. I had no idea where I was going or where I was invited, but this seemed just too good to pass up. So I went, and I went a couple of days early, went over to the office just off Red Square where the group was to meet and presented myself and they took me into the meeting room where the U.S. team was preparing and they gathered around and I said, did you tell me what in the world I'm doing here? <laughs> no idea. And they said, well, the president, for his first summit, decided that he didn't just want to talk about nuclear weapons. And so we spent a couple of days back and forth with his staff and the Mr. Putin's staff, and they decided that in addition to the summit itself, they would run a parallel meeting for three days of 10 senior leaders from the U.S. and the Soviet and nonprofit sectors. Mm, okay. And um, now I think I understand. And they said, well, we have something more to ask you. We were told by the White House staff, by the President's staff, that you're a particularly good friend of the President's. And I said, uh, with all respect, I've known the President for a while and we're friends. I'm not a particularly good friend. And they said, well, Mr. Feldstein, we never met you before. He's the President. We're taking him at his word. <laughs> So we have a few favors we'd like to ask you. You don't have to do them, but here's what they are. And the first one, they said, was when he comes in the room, this will be his first summit. He's never been to Moscow. He's never met Mr. Putin, never been part of a summit. So we'd like you to stand right up front. We'll put a seat and a mark for you. So when he comes in, he sees a friendly face. Uh, <laughs> I can do it, okay. That's good, and then... The second request we have, a little tougher, so think about this, you have a couple of days. Uh, at the end of the regular summit, there's going to be a three quarters of a day or half a day where the nonprofits will come together and the president and Mr. Putin will chair the meeting together and we would like you to sit next to President Obama and brief him and coach him on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a little nervous, but okay. And uh, I walk back to my room, back through Red Square, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. It's a little scared, but okay. And I called the office in New Hampshire to tell people wh why I was there. And uh, about four or five hours later, I get a call, and it was from the chairman of the board of the Charitable Foundation. And he said, Lou, we're extraordinarily proud and pleased that you got this honor. It means a great deal, and we're very happy for you. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> but we have a problem. <laughs> and I said, uh, what? He said, well, I'm sorry to have to do this on the telephone, Lou, but and then 6,000 miles away and so forth, but... The problem is that for the last few of our board meetings, we noticed that you've been falling asleep during the board meeting. <laughs> you, don't, you don't snore, but you clearly... And when someone asks you a question, you sort of wake up and you, you sort of catch it and you get the question. But it's, it's just not acceptable. But more to the point, Lou, and I've never had to do this with you before. I'm going to give you a set of instructions now. Um, tell you something I, you must do. 
and that is you cannot sit next to the president and brief him during the meeting. Why? He said, well, Lou, no matter what you tell us, we don't think you're capable of not falling asleep. <laughs> and with all the press in the world, we are taking pictures, what would be worse? <laughs> and this guy sitting next to the president. <laughs> and we just don't trust you to be strong enough to keep yourself awake, no matter what you tell us. And it would be, the, the downside is too bad. So we went back and forth, and I said, well, what if I... He said, no, you cannot have the president tapping you. <laughs> That's also not acceptable. So we went back and forth a little bit longer, and I was really bummed. And finally, they did agree that they would let me do this, if it was okay with the U.S. people as well, with security, to have someone sit behind me, and the sole job was to keep prodding me. <laughs> so we did it, and I did it. Um, and the lesson for me in this whole event was that here on this extraordinary moment of just incredible honor and sort of one of the nicest things and best things that happened in my life, you also discover that there were some bad things in your life and things you don't know and that even people close to you and your friends don't tell you and you learn that. <laughs> but that was my lesson. With the good comes the, the embarrassing part. Thank <laughs> <laughs>